Hi, Katie. Hi, uh, Jamie. Uh, what what happened today? Um, today we we were able to sit in on the meeting where they reported the outcome of the expert uh, consultation on demonstration projects um, here in the executive boardroom. And. Uh, if you were to sort of explain what's going on to your mother. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess I'm feeling quite disappointed at the moment because we had thought that this, pro we had treated this process very genuinely. We'd put a lot of effort in to come up with proposals about how do you really transform R&D in areas where it's not working, like for example in tuberculosis or um, I don't know, in fever diagnostics, to, just to name two of the proposals we worked on. But how do you transform R&D that's not working into a system that does work? And how do you demonstrate those new models? And there's a long history involved in this. It's supposed to be based on several reports, the Global Strategy and Plan of Action, the Consultative Expert Working Group, which was really focused on delinking the cost of R&D from the price of newly developed products. Um, it was about open collaborative models and basically doing something new, demonstrating something that hasn't been done. Um, I think what happened today is that we heard a report that projects have been selected that are very much about um, the status quo really they're not they're not particularly innovative they're um, they're not bad proposals scientifically they're good proposals that should be funded but there are mechanisms already um, created to fund them and what the proposals that we would have liked to see go through like for example um, developing antibiotics as public goods or um, you know developing just transforming the way that intellectual property is held on um, medicines those proposals were all uh, deprioritized during the ranking exercise um, um, and that's really disappointing. Thank you. Is there anything you'd like to add? Yeah. Um, I guess for me, looking at what's gone wrong, um, I think it's really all about the criteria that were used to judge the proposals. Um, because when, when we did have the chance to look at them, what you see is that proposals that can identify projects basically that are already up and running or almost up and running are going to score higher than new innovative proposals and that's really a problem because this was supposed to be about testing new models yet in the criteria if you had identified pre production partners already if you'd identified who specifically could develop your product then you were going to score higher than if you had come up with a framework for you know involving many different developers getting many different producers into the field and I think as such, the criteria really, dis yeah, really deprioritized delinkage. Um, without saying so explicitly, it was leaning towards proposals that were already on the ground, um, and that's not very innovative. I have uh, two quick questions about what happened. One is, um, uh, if you had two kinds of proposals, one that offered to set up a financing mechanism to give money to third parties, that'd be the first group. And the second was a uh, a request for money to give to the entity itself to do research. Which which two went forward? Uh, which which of those two went forward? And which of those two did not go forward? Um, so exactly, the problem was that those proposals that were being put forward by agencies that had a product to develop and were just applying for funding to spur that development were the ones that went through because they could show they could prove according to the criteria that they had a very well developed business plan of what they were going to do and those that were about setting up a framework for funding multiple entities would deprioritize according to the criteria so those much more innovative and much more open proposals were the ones that we saw slipping off the list as the criteria um, were we used to judge the proposals my last question is, if you had two groups of proposals, one which were disruptive for the current R&D model, and another one which was not disruptive, which one moved forward and which, which group did not move forward? The non-disruptive ones moved forward. The proposals that went forward were proposals that would already find funding within existing grant making organisations or existing PDPs. That's not to say they're not good, strong scientific proposals that definitely need more money and will result in good products that need to get to patients. But the proposals that were much more transformatively looking at new models of innovation um, that really prove new pathways and show that we can do R&D differently, those projects were not, did not move forward. Thank you. Thank you very much.